You have enough swag yet? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am Christopher Shelley. I am a graduate of the Celebrant Foundation and Institute, the first Celebrant Training Center in all of North America, the first to have virtual training. We were doing virtual long before anybody else was. The Celebrant Foundation and Institute trains people to celebrate human beings of all cultures, all religions, whether they are alive or dead. But since this is wedding MBA and not funeral MBA, I'm gonna tell you some wedding stories. Now, back in April, I officiated a wedding that was particularly daunting in a psychological way. There was a lot going on with the families. And this guy came over to me at cocktail hour and he told me how much he loved the ceremony. He loved how it was personal, how it honored both the families considering what was going on with the families. He loved that it was fun. He loved that it was funny. He loved that it was entertaining. And this made me feel really good because it turned out this guy was a Las Vegas entertainer. A juggler named Jeff Civilico, who's had a show in the strip for 10 years. He still performs at the Excalibur. He thought the ceremony was entertaining. That made me feel great. And it also got me thinking that Celebrant Foundation celebrants are the Las Vegas entertainers of the wedding industry. Here's how I think that. We are jugglers. We juggle wedding venue contacts and wedding parties and bridezillas and groomzillas and ring bearerzillas. We juggle DJs and musicians and photographers and videographers, all these people. And we make sure that our juggling is done in 18 minutes, the ideal length of time for the average attention span. We are people who do card tricks. We actually do card tricks. Couples give us at least 52 details about their lives. We shuffle all these details together. We put them together in ways no one's ever heard of before to create an amazing, stellar, moving love story. We do balancing acts. We do balancing acts all the time between traditions and creativity, between cultures and religions, and oftentimes families. Let's say her family is Italian, his family's French, no problem. Non si preoccupare, tu va bien, monsieur. We learn foreign languages to welcome people. It's just a polite thing to do. What if his family's Catholic, her family's Jewish? No problem. We hang out under a homemade huppah while Heather hums a hymn. What if his family's from a red state, her family's from a blue state? No problem. We talk about literally anything else. We're mind readers too, yeah. Even when we're doing a small ceremony in a park by a tree with two people we've barely met before, we still know all the best things to say to make even the quickies meaningful. That's right, write this down. Celebrants make quickies meaningful. And finally, we are tiger tamers. It's true. Weddings can be psychologically daunting things to create. Wedding ceremonies can be psychologically and socially daunting things to create. Here's an example. In 2020, Lenny and Amanda had a very small wedding it was COVID times, they were on a roof, only two people watching. My good friend Bettina, lovely woman, also a celebrant, Bettina officiated that wedding. A year later, they had a huge wedding with hundreds of guests. My friend Bettina was not available, so I officiated. But between that first wedding in 2020 and the second wedding in 2021, the groom underwent a huge transformation. The groom decided that he was now she, and she now presented as female. Lenny now wore women's clothing. Lenny wore makeup. Now, Lenny had gone around to all the family members trying to explain this transition, but they were still having a very difficult time wrapping their minds about what had happened, wrapping their minds around this decision. So by the time we got to the wedding day, and I looked out at that sea of faces, there was a lot of confusion, there was a lot of tension in the room. So here's what I did. 
I made mention that they'd done a small wedding the year before. I mentioned they were so happy to have everyone present to do their huge wedding this year. And then here's what I said. Last year, Lenny and Amanda's wedding celebrant was a woman. This year, their wedding celebrant is a man. And other than that, I can't think of anything that's different in their lives. This broke the ice immediately. There were so many happy faces out there. And then we went on, as celebrants do, to tell an amazing love story. The fact of the matter was, Lenny and Amanda did not care how either one of them presented to the outside world. They loved each other and supported each other no matter what, and that was that. So, that's taming a tiger. That's taking a terrifying, terrifying tiger and turning it into a stuffed little cute animal. Finally, Celebrant Foundation wedding celebrants have two major signature tricks. And this is again how we are very much like Las Vegas entertainers. The first trick, we make every other wedding vendor look really good. Every vendor's work is meant to reflect the couple's personality in some way. Our love stories are so personal, they explain those personalities so everyone knows what we're dealing with. Everyone knows this is why we're getting married in December. This is why we're getting married in a barn. This is why we're playing ACDC instead of Packle Bell's Cannon. And our final signature trick. By the time the wedding day rolls around, people hear the weddings we do, they are so specific to our brides and grooms, so specific to their situation in their families, so specific to their cultures, to their religions, that many of the wedding guests, and even sometimes many of the wedding party members, assume that we are not a wedding vendor. They assume that we are just some friend. But the truth is, by the time the wedding day does arrive, we are friends. Friends who know what they're doing. I would like to make friends with all of you today. The Celebrant Foundation's booth is over there. It's right there. Stop by, talk to us, there's so much to talk about. We would love to have some nice new students learning all about these things. I went to the Celebrant Foundation in 2011. I was officiating weddings by 2012. It's been over 10 years now and I've married over a thousand people to each other and I'm still always learning. The one thing is always true after every ceremony I do. The guests come up to me and they ask me how I know the couple. They ask me who I am. I must know them because I said all this stuff that only someone who knows them could possibly know. And I tell them, no, I'm just some vendor they found on the knot or wedding wire or something like that. And they're amazed, they're floored. If you can make a wedding ceremony personal in any way, you will knock people's socks off. But I learned how to do all of these things at the Celebrant Foundation. They train you for the complexities of the modern wedding. Brides and grooms, brides and brides, grooms and grooms come from all over the world. All different belief systems, all different religions. It's very complicated sometimes. Sometimes their parents are still married. Sometimes they're divorced. It's complicated, it's messy, it's complex. But you can still have fun, tell an amazing love story despite all that complexity. And you will have the happiest guests you've ever seen. Please stop by our booth and say hello. Thank you very much.